I'm going to ask them if it's okay with them that they can, uh, um, we'll give a deadline, you know, um, maybe, you know, maybe because we'd like to get it out really like seven o'clock Thursday night or something like that. So give a deadline, you know, uh, six o'clock or 5.30 Thursday, something like that. But I'll, I'm going to ask them set up. Yeah, I'm going to ask them if they can do it. I think Pesach also be good because he has a good eye and cares. I know, but if we also get too many people involved, if I'm putting it to like seven, eight, seven people, it's uh, uh, people are going to have more to say, and I'm never going to be able to send it out. So I think if we just leave it with uh, you, your wife, then go. I mean, I don't know. Uh, you think Pesach is necessary? Actually, it was Mendel's idea, not mine. Uh, the only reason with. Um... With Pesach, he, he, he cares and he has the you know a different eye that would see things. But no, that's enough. That'll be enough after that. Hello, hello, Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. How are you? <laughs> How are you keeping? Thank God. How are you? Baruch Hashem. Thank God. Thank God. Lots of good things. Oh, look at you. Wow. Chassid, a new chassid in town. <laughs> I've, been, I've been a chassid a long time. That's right. Now you're... Rabbi, hold on, hold on one second. My apologies. Sure. Hi. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Are we going to get a Yeah, for sure. We're going to get a uh, 
Jeff is coming, David uh, Gamal is coming. Uh, I, Mendel, I didn't ask for tonight, but I'm sure Mendel will come tonight too. Okay, I'm just uh, I'm just on a class on Zoom. Okay, well, we'll go. let's just if let's just comes and we're done. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Rabbi. It needs to be. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm not 100 percent certain. I'm just sorry. Okay. Goodbye. Hello. Yes, I'm just trying to fix my speakers. Go ahead. I'm just trying to download something here. Um, it's here. Rabbi? Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm uh putty in your hands. All right, okay. Wanna get the give me one quick moment so I can find here. Mm -hmm. Basi Lagani. Oh, well, did we say we're going to do Basi Lagani, right? Yeah, well, we, we started. We started not oh, last nice. week, but we started the week before. Oh, okay. So remind me where we are. <laughs> well, I was hoping you were going to do that for me. We had one lesson. Okay. Yeah, tonight is Yitzvah. Tomorrow, Yitzvah. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that in your in your email. <laughs> so, I have some. Hold on, I think I might have. Okay. All right, let me share something. What do you see? Uh, hold on one little second. You're on your phone, so it's going to be too small to read? No. What do you see? Do you see um, 1125 or do you see Lakuti Sikhas? Oh, no. That's the wrong thing, anyways. I think it's the wrong uh, thing. I don't see anything right now. Now you see Basi Lagani? I do. Okay. So let's learn this together. So we have the Hebrew on the one side, right? In English. So Basi Lagani I have come to my garden. So the Major says that it's speaking about God. This is a this is a a um, a verse from King Solomon in Ecclesiastics. I've come to my garden, God says. So first of all, I think, I'm, I don't know if I mentioned last time that God looks at this world as a garden, even though you could look at it, see it as a jungle, but 
God sees it as his garden, and that's ultimately what he wants, right? Mm -hmm. it's, um, that it should be his garden. As a matter of fact, the Medrash says, Liganuni, which means to my bridal path. And that's a reference to um, not only the Garden of Eden, but also it's a reference to the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai, where um, God came to his bridal path because that was the marriage between God and the Jewish people. So he wants to come uh, into this, back into this world. Now, what happened was briefly what we learned, there were uh, seven generations that uh, were not endearing to God and the presence of God left this world, beginning with the sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil by Adam and Eve. So the presence of God was removed. He was, he left his garden, right? Mm -hmm. and then finally it came back, the seventh generation, beginning with Abraham, Abraham, he was the first. And, uh, and the seventh is Moshe Rabbeinu. He's seven generations later. And all sevens are endearing, called Shvi'in Chavivim. Not because there's a virtue to the seventh, but the seventh is a continuation of the first, right? And the first came here with a mission. What was the mission? To bring the oneness of God to the world. Not only that, that, that Abraham himself was committed to God, but he would not only himself call out to God, it says, Vayikra Avram, Meshem Hashem, Kelelam. He And Avram called out in the name of God, God, world. He's, you know, the world is of God. Or God is the world, right? But it says, Vayakra, he made others call out. In others, he, he inspired others to call out that God is the true reality of this world. That is the mission that began with the first generation. And it is endeared. The seventh generation is endeared, not because they have a virtue, not because they've, they have of their great accomplishment, but because they're a continuation from the first. In other words, they're, they're continuing that which was started with the first. What is it that um, Moshe Rabbeinu did uniquely to bring the divine presence finally back to this world, that God again dwelled in this world. As the verse says, the third uh, phrase there, right? Make for me a sanctuary and I will dwell amongst them. In other words, making a home for God, God will dwell not in the, in the stones, even though he'll dwell there too, but he'll dwell in each and every one of us. That's why it says in the plural, not it should say, which means in it, in the sanctuary, but it says in them. What's who's the them? Them is each and every one of us. That God will dwell in us, right? And this is um, and what does it mean to make a sanctuary? How do you make a sanctuary for God? What does that mean? So you make it. So from the physical making of the sanctuary, we can understand what it is the spiritual making of the sanctuary in each and every one of us, right? As a, as the verse says, Asisa et Akrashim, make the planks, the Mishkan, for the Mishkan, the sanctuary, Atse Shitim, as translated as Acacia wood, Oindim standing. Right? So let's take the, the words over here, Krashim. You see the word Krashim, planks? You see it? Uh, take yourself off um, mute. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So the word Kuf Reishin is is a singular kerish for plank. Krashim is planks, plural, mm -hmm. right? So if you turn around the letters, shin, kuf, resh, it spells sheker. So you have here, sheker. From kerish, you make sheker. Got mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Then here, take the word shitim, acacia wood. Shitim is shat, shtus. The word mm -hmm. shtus which means folly. Mm -hmm. So what, what is the idea of making this home for God, that God will dwell, will, will dwell here, is taking from the lies of the world and turning it into a plank that is a home for God. Taking the folliness, the folly that there is, and then changing that into shittim, into acacia wood that is those planks that you're making the home for God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing. In other words, we're not running away from this world. What we're doing is taking 
uh, uh, that which is of the world and we're transforming it into something that will be holy. Now, right. that doesn't mean you're not taking bacon and transforming it into holiness. What you're doing is we're, we're in, in us, um, hold on one second. Oh, well, okay, we'll get there. We'll get there, what that means. Now, this then- Rabbi, is, hold on one sec. Sorry, hold on one sec. Richard, my speakers, for some reason, You know, like if you just take one of my, my Cisco messages. Mm -hmm. Like, like, oh, it's here. Oh my God. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was checking the plugs. I was, uh, thank you so much. Oh, I feel like such an idiot matter i know uh, the volume I, my, my speakers weren't working but the the volume was like anyways no problem oh <laughs> yeah sometimes like a stupid little thing that we're overlook and that happens to me all the time <laughs> yeah okay so and ultimately this is what god wants is the next phrase God desires a dwelling place in this low world. In other words, you know, you would naturally you would think that where would God want to hang out, right, is going to be in the more spiritual realm, the souls in Gan Eden, you know, uh, lofty souls above, you know, after um, you know, uh, after we leave this world after 120 years, so you would think, you know. Um, well, that's the real place. That's where really what God wants. No, his desire is to dwell here in this low world. Over, only over here can we have the essence of God. Only over here can we have a relationship to the core essence of God. In When our soul leaves this world, we don't have a core essence relationship with God. We only have, so to speak, a glimmer, a ray of light of him. Here we have God himself in a connection, in a relationship. And that's that's here. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, so now the question becomes, how are we gonna accomplish this to make, you know, you know, think about it. You know, there's more lies than there is truth. There's more folly than there is um, being straight. How are you gonna transform this world? How are you going to do that? I mean, think about it. It's a uh, uh, it's a task that is. You there? I don't hear you because you're on a mute. Sorry, I'm here. Don't worry, I'm here. Okay. Well, what, uh, don't put on mute. Uh, one second. You know what? Don't be seventy five percent here. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred ten. You're right. Uh, so. Think about it for a moment. You know, we see what's going on in the states, right? We see what's going on in the world, and 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 um, the ways of the wicked are prosperous. Um, you know, if you're in business and you step on people, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna make uh, you're gonna make money. You know, you don't step on people, you don't make as much. It seems to prosper. Uh, you know, if you are, uh, if you're just thinking about yourself, you're going to move ahead. You care about others, mm, you know. Um, in other words, the push for that, the pull for that from within and from without is so strong. It is like, how, how do you overcome? So every other, every other faith, well, huh, you can't. So you got to run away. So you got to go on top of the Benton Mountain. You got to become a, a monk. You got to mm -hmm. become a priest that, you know, you have nothing to do with this world. You know, nothing, none of the pleasures of this world, because those pleasures are going to just ultimately crush you. And here we're saying the opposite. No, you have to transform it. Like, where's that coming? Mendel? Yeah. Starting with Stephen. Want to say hi to Stephen? Yeah. Hold on. Oh, I don't know how to put on speaker over here. Uh, get back to you. 
Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Mendel says hi. Wonderful. Hi, Mendel. <laughs> so that when you think about it, right? It, it to to lead a good life, a, a godly life, uh, a life that you know that you're not going to be. How are you going to do that? And here, what God wants is that we should be here transforming it. But you see everyone else that wants to connect to God, wants to do good, wants to, you know, uh, you know, okay, some people want to do good, but they want to have two worlds, right? Most people I want to have two worlds, <laughs> right? But if you only have one, you have, only want to have one world, right? Um, of serving. So most people serving, they are, you know, they're going to try to remove themselves from this world, from this lies, from the folly of this world. But here, no, we have to transform it. We, keep, we don't run away from it. So how are we going to do it? So that's the idea now that is next. Tzivis Hashem. Literally means Hashem's army, Legion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This week's Parsha, incidentally, um, the Jewish people are leaving Egypt. In Parsha's boy, in this week's Parsha, we leave Egypt. What does the verse say? God calls us Sivus Hashem, his army, his legion, that we are leaving, getting out of Egypt. Right? Um, why are we called that? We've never been called that before. What is it? And first of all, that's our name. Later on, we see that God has called this too. In, in the story of Hannah, um, who gives birth to the, the prophet Samuel, Shmuel, Right. Um, she refers to God as, as in this name. Here it's in reference to the Jewish people. God's not called this, but later on, God is called this. Mm. The truth is, this is a name of God. It's one of the seven names of God that you can't erase. Um, it, and, and it's a it, it's one of the uh, one of the names of God. What what is it? What is this attribute of civilization? So what is a what is a soldier in the army? Soldier in the army is about following orders in order to be triumphant over the enemy, over the adversary, right? So this attribute of triumph is called netzach in Hebrew. There is with us below and there is above that concept. What is the triumph above? What does it mean? God, what is what does it mean God tri being triumphant? What does need God need to be triumphant? Well, he wants us to be triumphant in our purpose down here and what we do. Mm -hmm. So he squanders all of the treasures in order to give us something that we will be able to be triumphant down here in our battle against the adversary. Who's the adversary? Lies and folly. My own lies, my own folly, right? To begin with, mm -hmm. when I can deal with that, then I'll be able to deal with the lies and the folly that is outside of me, mm -hmm. beyond me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this is, the triumph, the eternity of the Jewish people that isn't false. What is it that should not be false about us? Is that we will be triumphant. So what is God giving us? He's giving, he's squandering his treasures. So what's his treasures? What's his ultimate treasure? So for most people, money and fame is treasure or family is treasure, right? That's their treasure. Um, for God, money is not a treasure. It's something that he has control over. Fame is not his treasure. What his treasure is, an interesting idea, is, and, and that treasure, sorry, let me back up for a second. A king has a treasure chest, right? And mm -hmm. has a, a storage house of treasures that he does not share with anybody. And he himself doesn't even open up. It's just, it's, it's there under lock and key hidden. When does he use it? 
only when there's a battle that his life is at stake the or the or the community and the the uh, kingdom is at stake then he opens up the treasures and he squanders it all and gives it all to the simple foot soldier in order that they can win the battle what's our battle our battle is to make a dwelling place for god in this low world to take right. from the from darkness to make it into light from lies to a home for god right that's what we're that's what we're here to do so what is that treasure that god's giving us you know what it is it's awesomeness that we stand before god what does that mean the greatest treasure that we can have in our lives is that trump is not reality and biden is not reality that um my uh breakfast wasn't reality and my uh big uh, fat um uh, year-end um you know uh whatchamacallit uh a bonus is not my reality. It's not, you know, that you don't appreciate it, right? But it's not my reality. It's not my truth. That's checker. That's folly. That's my reality. The big bonus. My, um, you know, um, a good meal. Uh, going out for a good meal. I mean, you can't go out for a good meal now. You can, but you can, you know, you can Uber eats a good meal. <laughs> Is that my reality? That's folly. That's Shekhar. What is your reality? Your reality is to transform that. How do you transform that? That know when you're eating a good meal, you're standing before God. Know that when you are making a bonus, you are standing before God. Oh, now that money becomes transformed because it's not about whoa wow look at this that's not reality what you got a fifty thousand dollar bonus that's not reality reality is that i got a fifty thousand dollar bonus and i'm standing before god and now i could be using it out in the way god wants me to use it that's transforming the folly and the lie into a home for god it's not denying the, the, the bonus. It's not denying the food. Denying not kosher food, of course, but not denying the kosher food. Not denying have, but, but recognizing that you're standing before God mm -hmm. with that food, with that money. Mm -hmm. That is what we're talking. That's the treasure that God is giving us and he is squandering. He's giving us the capability that we can have that in our lives. That makes sense? Totally. And that will make us triumphant. Huh? So it's beautiful and it's so so obvious. It it's it like so obvious when we hear it. Yeah. And it and it resonates so beautifully. But it's like uh it, it's like uh you know, you know when, you, when you think about the things that motivate you know the average person a, a new car a bigger house more money uh you know more status more you know like that can't be it there's nothing godly about these things it's and 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 of course you have to do something with that and you and and it and it's the that's where the the godly component or 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 capacity or potential you know uh exists and right. and and of course as as jews that's our obligation that we we know this other people don't other you know if you're not jewish you, you don't know these things totally. right and and of course uh, you know if you're having a good meal you should be saying a bracha if you if you made a nice bonus you should be giving tzedakah if you should and that's the value that's Right. What's interesting. So, but, but we're going a step deeper over here. It, it's not just the, it's not just the, uh, the, the awareness that we have to do right with it. Right. It's a step before that, that there's a presence of God with that. Yeah. That brings you to the consequence of using it that way. Sure. Right. So you're correct. hundred percent what you're saying. Um, but what, what is being, what we're expressing over here is having that 
uh, mindfulness, that awareness that will allow you to come to get there. Because remember, our, uh, you know, the issue was over here. I mean, the world, it's, it, the world is full of lies. The world is full of folly. How are you going to be, how are you going to be able to make that home for God? Like, when you think about it, like, you know, see what's going on on, in in the world out there, right? If you go on, if you go on Twitter, you go on Facebook, how much good is there and how much is there falsehood and lies, right? If you go out in the street and you go and see, you know, what, what people are engaged in, in their lives. So it's not so, not so easy, not so simple. How are you going to get there? So that means that's the idea of army of God, because we're the soldiers, we're simple foot soldiers. We're the seventh generation. The greatness was the, you know, the, you know, the Abraham, the general, you know, greatness was, you know, the yeah. first generation. We, we are just the foot soldiers who are now making the final conquering of the adversary and transforming the world from that darkness to light, right? right. To godliness. So the question is, how are you going to do it? You know, we're simple foot soldiers. You know why? Even as a simple foot soldier, God is squandering. He's the king who's leading this battle, wants his battle to be won for us. And, and, and he's squandering all of his riches. What's his riches? Him. Presence of him. Mm -hmm. The presence of him. When we have that notion, that presence of God in, 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 in our lives, so it enables us now that when we make that bonus, we don't. That doesn't become the reality. When we're getting that delicious uh, dinner, it doesn't become the reality, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't become a reality, not unto God, right? It be when you have that presence, so then you'll be able to create that reality, and then the food becomes the vehicle, and the money becomes the vehicle of a higher exactly. and greater connection. Exactly. It's not the end. It's it's the means. Exactly, exactly. Very nice. Yeah. So this idea of being triumphant ultimately is uh, actually expressed um, in, in the concept of Jerusalem. Because now what are we saying? Triumph is the power of presence of something greater than you. So you don't get caught up in you. You don't get caught up in your, you know, your, your, minuscule, you know, uh, childish, foolish, and lie, foolish and, 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 and lies, right? Mm -hmm. So the truth is this idea of, of, of being triumphant is, and this idea of presence of God, that is what the holy city of Jerusalem is all about. Yushalayim mm -hmm. comes from two words, yira, as you see there, uh, you see over here, yira shalem. Yira meaning to see, and mm -hmm. also meaning to fear, fear meaning presence of God. Like when do you fear, when do you, when are, you know, when you're, no one is present in the room, you, you act one way. When someone is present, just because of their presence, you, you know, you, you check your tie, you check your clothes, you know, especially if it's someone who's important to you, you want to make sure you're looking appropriate, you know, that's, that's fear. Mm -hmm. Fear of presence, not fear of punishment, but fear of the presence, which yeah. is which is a good thing because it leads us to you know act differently. Mm -hmm. So um, and, right, so when there's the presence of God, and it's a, if there's no presence of God, and, and you get the fifty thousand dollar bonus, then oh boy, are you are you you can be re, you know, a person can be really full of themselves. Look how great I am! <laughs> mm -hmm. Look what I got! You know, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. and so on. So where is this presence ultimately uh, to be found is in Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem means Yerushalayim, complete. Shalom means complete, full, right? And Shalom means peace, but it also means whole and complete. Complete Yira, complete awe, the complete awe of God, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where in place, in space, where this is in, in its totality. And that's why, you know, Mashiach will bring that reality ultimately. And the triumph in the divine service is to do even when we don't want or feel like it, even to completely go against our nature. Um, now, this is the final point over here. The real presence of God in our lives, right, which will create a home for God, in each and every one of us, which was, as we explained before, the sanctuary that God wants to dwell in each and every single one of us, right? 
is not when we just do what God wants, but when we're able to go above and beyond the comfort zone, right? Even when you don't want, or you don't feel like it, mm-hmm. or it's against your nature, you're doing something against your nature. If you're going against your nature, your nature is in a sense a lie and folly. Why is it a lie? Because you say, well, you know, that's my nature. That's the way I am. So no, that's a lie. That's the way God made you, but that's where your work needs to be engaged. You have to engage in that in that area of work, right? Mm-hmm. So not to 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 suggest for a moment that you are, you know, that that you can't evolve from there. So that is the comfort zone that we like to be. That's the lie that we like to live, <laughs> right? To live in that comfort zone. So triumph in our divine service will mean that even when you don't want or you don't feel like it, right? You can go against your nature and do that which God wants. Why? Because where are you going to get the power to do that? Because of his presence. If he's present, then that will give me the capability to get beyond my comfort zone. If he's not present, then I'm just going to go on autopilot. I'm just going to live life the way I'm comfortable to live life. But I'm not going to try to achieve more. Mm-hmm. And that is to go out of your limitations and boundaries, even of holiness. It doesn't mean only in like, it doesn't mean only out of your foolishness in the sense that you're doing something wrong, but even when you're doing good, that's also a limitation. You know, if you're consistently just in the same level of doing good, then that's your box. That's your limitation. That becomes your, in a sense, in, in a sense, it's your folly right yeah yeah where is it that god's presence is really the 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 treasure chest that he's giving you is to go above and beyond that each and every one of us are equal in that meaning um meaning to say everybody has their own folly everybody has their own box which is their folly yeah which is their folly that we need to rise above that is the story my friend Rabbi, I have a huge bag. I had two pushkas that were full, so I emptied them into a bag. You told me to do this a while ago. Right. So I have this bag of, you know, various coins. You come by, you can come by. To, you know, uh, you can come by here, by the way. You're allowed. And I can just drop and it off. You, and I can see you from sure. six feet distance. I was going to leave it in the bushes and tell you where to find it. <laughs> You're going to bury it so I can find a treasure. There you go. <laughs> To stay with today's theme. <laughs> exactly. All right, my friend. God bless you, Rabbi. Thank you for the lesson. Yeah. Good you know, my, I, I, I just realized I recorded. I, this always gets recorded automatically. Do you mind if I post this in, in my uh, YouTube station? This Not at all. Teaching? Not at all. Okay, great. Good job. Good job, Rabbi. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye.